we go. All right, folks. Back to another NSC four session. All right. We're still in the section chapter one of the security study guide, right? For the Fortinet NSC four. Um labeled introduction and initial configuration. Okay. Yesterday we went ahead and tackled um went over, you know, high level features, setup decisions where it talked about, you know, how FortiGuard works, some of the UTMs at a high level, um, the motherboard, right, the specialized chips, the SD, SPUs that Fortinet uses in, in its devices that makes it differ from all other uh, firewall vendors. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in, right? And start doing some basic administration. Okay. Go to the next slide. All right. So what are the objectives for this section? Right. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we know how to manage administrative administrative profiles, right? Manage administrative users, right? Define the configuration method for administrative users, right? Control administrative access to the FortiGate GUI and the CLI. Okay. And last but not least, manage specific aspects of the network interface. Okay. So from this point on, I'm gonna say these two things, right? Um, I need you to lock it in. If you work with FortiGates, um, I need you to keep this in the back of your mind. On on Fortinet OS, right? Forty OS, whatever you want to call it. There are certain things you can do in the CLI that you can't do in the GUI. There's certain things you can do in the GUI that you cannot do in the CLI. Either way, there's always a way to configure something on your device, okay? Right? The only way something would stop it is if it's a software limitation, okay? So just remember that. If you can't do it in the GUI, you might be able to do it in the CLI. If you can't do it in the CLI, you might be able to do it in the GUI. Okay? All right. So, see some commands here. All right? Basic CLI commands or what have you, right? And so, let's go ahead and start playing with our CLI within our 40 gig. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Okay? So, again. Right on this lab journey, we went ahead and we set up right, our FortiGate, right? Okay, same topology as yesterday. Let's go ahead and log in. Right. This is my password. There we go. All right, so we have. Oh, we got to go ahead and do something real quick. While we do that, I believe I. Shut it off the wrong way. This. Oh, Dan. There we go. All right. So while that reboots, right? So what are the, some of the basic CLI commands, right? So when you first get your CLI, you may want to check, a, you know, a few things: the current status, right, of your 48, right? How would you check that? Right? There's a command called get system status, right? What about you want to go ahead and see all the attribute values, right, for the system, right? You do a show full configuration system interface, right, of the port number, okay? What if you want to go ahead and take a look at and see all the non-default attributes, right, the, the, the things that are not automatically configured whenever you pull them out of the box, right? You can do a show system interface, maybe the port, okay? So. You have some of those options, right? Or I know a lot of you are coming from, you know, a Cisco background, a Juniper background, or what have you. Fortinet does run on Unix, right? But it takes some time to get used to. So I like to go ahead and tell people to take your time, learn the entire command set, right, from Fortinet to get familiar with it, right? so that you can understand what you're doing. Because I believe the GUI is easy, right? But you have to, especially for this exam, understand what the CLI looks like, okay? Let's go ahead and do those three commands. Let's do a get, let's do a get system status, check a few things. Once it boots up, we'll go ahead and knock that out. Any other questions? 
Okay. All right, so we'll just go ahead and wait for it to boot up. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. All right, so we have our 40 gate fresh in our environment. Let's go ahead and get the status of it. So let's do a get system status, right? So what do we see here, right? We see a few things. We see the version, right? The code that it's on, right? 7.0, okay? Make sure it does match up with the exam, all right? Of course, and here's a couple of things that you see that we talked about yesterday, right? The current, the current version of the, of the signatures gained, right? From Fortigard, okay? So this is a couple of things you can look at as well. If in the future, you're trying to verify, you know, what version of the you know Fortigar subscription services is sending the antivirus signatures, right? The um virus database, et cetera, a few things you can go ahead and check, right? A couple of things you have here the serial number, right? All the basics of the device you want to go ahead and check, right? How many CPUs you're using, the RAM, right? The host name, right? We haven't changed that yet. Right, what mode it's running in, right? We talked about that yesterday. NAT or transparent, right? The VDOM, right? Or the virtual domain. We're going to talk about VDOMs in the future. Right? If right, if there's different Fortigates that work under this Fortigate, right? What's the current status of the entire VDOM, right? Okay. Couple of things. Couple of things. FIPS mode, right? For my governor government employees. Some of you guys know about FIPS, okay? So a lot of good, useful first, you know, first glance commands that you go ahead and put in, right? This is a basic command, right? A get system status, right? What else? Show full configuration. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, show full configuration system. There we go, right? What does that tell us, right? It gives us all the information about our interface, right? I won't dive deep into it, right? But here are just some commands, right? That you guys will use, guaranteed for it, all right? Let's go ahead and hop back into the slide. There we go. All right. So, along with basic administration, right, we need to make sure that we understand how to create an administrative user, right? how to do this, right? Well, of course, we first have to log in as that default admin, right, when we booted up the box, right? If my Kivia, right, or Antoine wants to go ahead and create an additional administrator, right, maybe for um, compliance reasons, you want to remove the default admin, okay, and go ahead and create your own admin, you have to go ahead and create that, right? So let's go ahead, let's walk through, and we're going to talk about how to go ahead and create that. Let's go into GUI. First, let's verify what that IP address is. Okay, so it's still 109. Perfect. All right. All right. One, 109. There we go. All right. Let's log in. All right, so we're in, right? So let's create a administrative user. All right? So what we're going to do, we're going to go down the system. All right? And we're going to go to administrator, right? Okay. And there should be a little box that says create new. As you see, our admin is right here. Right, so let's go ahead and create a new admin, right? And let's take a stop right here, right? So we have different type of administrators we can go ahead and create. We have regular administrator, right? So go ahead and access the device. We have our REST API admin, right? Maybe you're doing some automation, you know, maybe you need to go ahead and set up a connector so that you can do some automations and send it down. You need to go ahead and create an administrator, right? So it can perform functions using automation, right? 
and you also have SSO admins, right? Maybe you're integrating SSO, right? You, you know, to assist with, you know, um, multi-factor authentication, and of course, setting up single sign-on, you know, all that that falls in compliance, right? You need to make sure there's an admin account. So Fortinet has grown over the years, right? And has given you guys and given us, right? All of, all of us, our customers, different ways to go ahead and um, administrator that, right? To have different accounts separated, right? And um, to be able to set that up, right? So it's real simple. Create an administrator account. We go ahead and click on create new. Go ahead and set up administrator, right? And let's go ahead and create that new admin. We're going to call him Donatello since I just watched the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? And we are going to create that password, right? There we go, right? Now, here's the beautiful thing, right? Is which I've never saw before, right? You can actually add comments to when you're creating administrator, right? Of course, in engineering, right? We want, always want to go ahead and put notes, right? So Fortinet noticed this, right? They heard the community and they say, hey, we do want to make sure that everything is documented for our customers and, and put a way to where that's possible. So you can go ahead. Yep. Yeah, that would be one, right? So you can use it for it, like my key just said, that's where your ticket number goes. You can put it for plenty of things, right? Just know documentation is key. So Fortinet heard their customers, so they added this here, right? So um, for, uh, you know, for my case, right, we're going to go ahead and put the ticket number, right? So maybe she got the ticket and said, hey, I'm going to create a new user. Right, okay. Now, administrator profile okay and we're going to touch on this right i'm going to give it super admin right which is the highest profile that it can go ahead and um and have if you want to give it full access to the fortigate we'll talk about administrator profiles in a little bit okay okay all right so let's move forward right so we created that administrator here all right let's move forward Okay, so we saw a little bit about admin profiles, right? But this is where permissions come in, right? So we have a profile. You can assign permissions to an administrator profile, right? What can you specify, right? You can specify read or write. You can specify read only, or you can specify none. They can just be an admin, right? But by default, right, out of the box, Okay, there is a special profile, right, named Super Admin. Okay, and of course, it's used by the default account admin, right? You can't change it, you can't remove it, it gives full access to everything, right? And so, if you guys are familiar with you know, Linux or what have you, that is the root super user account. Okay, what other options do we have, right? So, let's go back to the Fortigate, right? Back to the Fortigate. There we go. Let's see what options we have, right? So we have Prof Admin, right? So this is another default profile, right? It gives, what it does is it gives you full access, okay? But here's the thing, right? With a FortiGate, right, we talked about virtual uh, domains, right? You can have multiple virtual domains on your FortiGate, right? But with Prof Admin, you can you can limit you can limit access per admin, right? If they have that Prof Admin profile, you can limit the access of which VDOM they have access to. Okay, so maybe you know Brian wants to go ahead and say, hmm. I just want to give him access to maybe the engineering VDOM, right? So let's just give him access to that, right? Christian? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly, power user, right? So you have your admin, but you have limited access, right? You don't have full access like a super user, if that makes sense, or like a root user, okay? So, and you can also change the permissions, right? So 
if Brian is administrating, you know, Twan's account, he can go ahead and say, hmm, maybe I want him to do this, but not really. Maybe I want him to be able to look at policy and objects and add firewalls, right? Add firewall policies. But, you know, I don't want him to change anything, right? But I do want him to have access to, you know, the system panel and have access to changing firmware. That makes sense? Hopefully it does. Let's keep rolling, right? Now, just to make sense of everything, right? So let's go back to creating a ministry, right? Right, and let's see all the profiles. Now, like I told you guys, super admin is a default profile, prof admin is a, is a default profile, and all these other ones are, right? You are not required to use a default profile, right? You can create your own profile that you want to use, right? Let's say for auditing purposes, you want to, you don't want to use anything default on the box. You want to erase everything and create your own thing. You absolutely have the option to do so, like I told you guys yesterday. Fortinet gives you the options to make this your, your own, right? To customize it for your organization, okay? All right. All right, so let's go ahead, right? And there's one more thing, right, that I wanna talk about before we leave talking about profiles and administrators, right? So I talked to you guys about there's some things you can do in the GUI and some things you can do in the CLI. Well, there's one more function that we need to talk about that's under the administrator and anything. It's a function called the over, override idle timeout, right? And so what this does, right, it allows an administrator, right, to go ahead and add a value, right, like a timer for, ad, for how long admins are logged in, right, and haven't, you know, haven't done anything for inactivity or what have you. You can go ahead and configure that, right? But you can't configure that in the GUI. You would have to go ahead and configure that within the CLI, right? So here's one of those situations where I told you guys, if you can't configure it in the GUI, you could configure it in the, in the CLI. So let's pull that up. Just a reminder yesterday, our CLI can be accessed from the GUI. Okay, so we're here, right? So to do that, let's go ahead and configure override idle timeout. We need to go to config, system, profile, okay? ACC profile, all right? So look at some options, right? We can go ahead, maybe edit, right? There we go we can edit the prof admin account, okay? All right, so we're in the prof admin account, right? Right, and we can go ahead and see, hmm, what can we set, right? And you can go ahead and set the timeout here, right? Right, right here, admin timeout override, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and set that, enable, and it's set, okay? This is another right situation to where, like I said, you can't do it in the GUI, you can absolutely do it in the CLI, right? And it'll become easier over time. So with this okay? particular part right here, do you get to set a certain amount for a certain amount of time for the timeout or is it a default for it? I believe it is a default time, um, but with Fortinet, right, especially if you open up a case, there is a op there should be an option to go ahead and set it per time, okay? Okay, cool. You know, I would go ahead and always advise anybody that's an administrator of a Fortinet, that, open up a case, right? Hear from the horse's mouth, okay? All right. Now, here's a visual, of course, what I was just talking to you guys about, right? So, we got super admin. They have full global access of the entire device, no matter if it's different VDOMs or what have you, right? Prof admin, right? Full access in a specific VDOM or virtual domain, right? And then, of course, you can create a custom profile, get partial global access, or if you want to create another custom profile, et cetera, et cetera. You have all the options in the world, okay? Okay. For the exam, you need to understand that within basic administration, you do have the option to set up two-factor authentication, right? Of course, this is network security, right? So, who wouldn't want to use two-factor authentication, right? So Fortinet does have it in a lot of their software, right? 
And just as a reminder, let's go over what uh, two-factor authentication is, right? So two-factor authentication means that instead of using one method to verify your identity, typically a password or a digital certificate, right, AO2.1X, right, your identity is verified by two methods, right? And so you guys see the example, right? So the example on the slide shows that uh, two-factor authentication, right, includes a password. So Antoine is trying to log into the FOIA date. He types his password in. But also, right, he has a RSA, right, RSA key right there from Fortinet that randomly generates a number, right? And I think that's actually called a 40 token. I think I used it, you know, probably for what, six months, right, until we moved to something else. But they have a 40 token that's synchronized with this FortiGate. So Twan can use that as well to go ahead and get into the device, right? So there's that. Not so much. Now, here's a major important piece, even just outside of the exam, right? Is resetting a lost admin password, okay? So, to do that, right, Fortinet by default has a specialized account called the maintainer account, okay? And so what that maintainer account is used for, it's mainly used for password recovery okay but the trick is right it's only available 60 seconds after the device boots right so if you miss that mark you'll have to reboot right and so if you're watching it you have your you know console cable plugged in you know a couple of things you need to look for when it's booting up you see the serial number go ahead and copy that serial number right copy that down right and get ready to paste it right because the username is going to be maintainer but that password, like you guys can see on the screen, is going to be BCPB, then the serial number of your 40 game, right? Right, and to be a little bit more explicit and clear, right, Fortinet lets us know that all the letters, right, in that serial number section within your password must be uppercase, okay? As you guys see, for example, it's uppercase S, uppercase G, and uppercase T, 60, right? Of course, pro, you know, along with the rest of the serial number, what have you, okay? And so with my experience, not just the study guide, I have seen this maintainer account is, exist on all Fortinet, you know, devices, okay? And so within the VM, there's not so much a procedure to do the maintainer thing, right? They typically go ahead and tell you to just revert to a snapshot or reprovision the VM, which is a headache, but this is what it is, right? All right, and so, and of course we can do that. I actually have Fortinet here at the house. I can actually show you guys, right? But again, this only can be done through the console port. You can't get into the GUI and then, you know, log into the maintainer account because again, it's only available 60 seconds after right after the device boots right but maybe right you work for organization and the, and for compliance they go ahead and say hey we need to go ahead and disable the maintainer account what it has listened to its customers right and actually made it possible for its customers to go ahead and disable that maintainer account okay so you do have the option to go to config system global, right, and do the set admin maintainer command, right, and you can go ahead and either put disable, right, if you want to go ahead and disable it, or enable, so go ahead and enable it, all right, okay, all right, now, what is this about, right, administrative access trusted sources, okay, so another way, right, because we're talking about basic administration, another way to go ahead and secure the FortiGate is to define the host or the subnets that are trusted sources from which should log on to the FortiGate, okay? So in this example, right, so we have, you know, they have in here locked in 10.0.1.10, right, slash 32, right? And they have this for the admin account, right? We went ahead and configured that. So if there was somebody from the 10.0.2.0 slash, 
you know, 24 network that was trying to log in, they won't be able to, right? Because the FortiGate sees, right, they'll get that packet, get that request to go ahead and SSH, and they'll say, uh, mm, we actually, um, this isn't part of the trusted host that's configured, and you'll receive authentication failure. Okay? Now let's go ahead and go ahead and configure that. So in our lab, right? So I set up different VLANs for a reason, because we're going to go ahead and test this out. So we have VLAN 1, right, between the FortiGate and the switch, right? The switch is doing layer 2 and layer 3 functions, okay? And so off this switch, I have two more VLANs. I have VLAN 10, which is sales, right? And I have VLAN 20, which is um, engineering, okay? So we want to give access to engineering, right? Because the network team falls under that, right? We don't want to give access to anybody else, right? For the admin account. So let's go ahead and make that change, right? First, we need to go ahead and make sure that layer three is all taken care of. We have our static routes, right? I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's configured and this Fortinet can go ahead, FortiGate can actually reach the different networks. Okay, let's go ahead and put that in. So 10.10, .10, let's look at that subnet. And that, and that, oh, so yeah, 10.10, 10.10, 10 .10, 10 .10, 10 24. There we go. Dot 10.1.0, there we go. Oops. There we go. All right. Oh. Okay. There we go. All right. And guys, I'm not talking about what I'm configuring because we will talk about routing in the infrastructure section. Okay. All right. Oh. oh, and I'm actually putting the wrong top. There we go. All right. And 20 engineering. All right. And let's go ahead and edit that one. All right, verify our interfaces. All right, okay. One dot one. So, okay. All good. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and just go to the CLI. We don't have a certificate, so we're going to have to use port 80. Okay. Allow. There we go. All right. So that's configured. Verify that. Perfect. All right, so ACP is enabled. We have routes. Okay. Let's go ahead and verify, right? Layer three. Right. And dot five. There we go. We can go ahead and reach it. Let's see if we can reach VLAN 20. There we go. All right, so we are good to go. Okay, so we're good to go. So, go back to our administrator accounts. But there we go. All right, so let's go ahead. All right, and let's restrict login to trusted host, right? 
And so Donatello works on engineering, right? And he's at, he's in the 10.10.20.0 slash 24 subnet. So let's go ahead and put that subnet in. Okay. There we go. All right, we're gonna hit okay. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're gonna go ahead and try to access right the Fortigate using Donatello's admin account. Okay, right from the sales network. Okay, log into that PC. All right. All right. Logging in. <clears throat> All right. So I'm in. I have access. Let's verify layer three. Okay. Verify that I can reach. All right. I can reach my gateway. Whoops. All right. There we go. All right. So we can reach our switch, right? That's doing layer three, doing some routing. Now let's see if I can go ahead and reach. Right, if I can reach the firewall. Okay. So I can ping the firewall, right? That's not an issue. All right. Let's see if I can go ahead and log in. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. All right, HTTP and dot ten dot one dot one. Okay. All right. All right. So right, the login screen comes in. And let's go ahead and try to log in with Donatello. All right. Okay. So I'm getting an authentication failure. Okay. And try it again. Excellent. All right. So we're getting failures, right? Let's try in a PC that's in VLAN 20. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and log in there. There we go. while we wait for Windows to log in. All right, let's do the same thing. Let's confirm layer three. All right, let's confirm I can reach my gateway. All right, okay, so I can reach the switch, right, which is my gateway, and let's see if I can reach the firewall. Okay. I can reach it, so all good. So let's go ahead and pull up Google, pull up a browser, whatever to your choosing. Let's go ahead and put the login as Donatello here. Oops. Yeah. There we go. And that turned out. There we go. There we go. All right. Oh, we're good. All right. One dot one. There we go. Start typing that again. There we go. Okay. All right. So we see the 48 login page. Now let's go ahead and try to log in with Donatello now. All right. Okay. All right. So same password, same username, and I'm actually able to log in, right? So that's how trusted hosts work, right? We can go ahead and limit, right, by subnet, right? But what if we do this?
right? What happens if I do that, right? Let's try it. Let's go ahead and go to the other PC, right? The sales PC that originally didn't work. I was able to log in. So here's a quick nugget, right? So since I went ahead, I know, since I went ahead and put a, there we go. So since I left, left it blank in a sense, or leave it to 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 0 slash zero, what does that mean, right? Well, that means that connections from any source, IP, right, will be allowed, okay? So by default, outside of the box, that subnet that you guys see means that anybody can access the FortiGate, right? Now, of course, it's highly recommended by Fortinet that you go ahead and change it and secure, your, you know, your network, right, to the highest level of ne network security that you can, okay? So... That's a little bit about how you can go ahead and set that up. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Any questions so far? I did. I'll take that as a no. You said you did. Who? Who's that? That was Christian. Okay. Yeah. What's going on, buddy? Not much, dude. Not much. So what's your question? No, I said... I was saying I have no questions. Oh, you don't? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, it's all good. all good. I got you. It's all good. It's all good. All right. So let's go ahead right, and take a look at this. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. Some of you guys took the Security Plus, Network Plus, CCNA, et cetera, right? You absolutely, right, can go ahead and customize port numbers, right, your access, right? And you know, set up your passwords, right? Securely set up your passwords within the systems that setting sections, right? To go ahead and answer your question, Brian, right? The default idle timeout is five minutes, right? You can go ahead and change that setting here, right? You can go ahead and hit the override idle timeout and go ahead and set it to maybe three minutes, right? Maybe you want to set it two minutes or one minute, okay? can go ahead and customize all of that here with an administrator settings, right? And I can go ahead and, and let you guys, show you guys how that looks. So we're in the system settings, right? And we're gonna go to settings, right? And customize all of that here. You can actually change the host name, right, of the FortiGate. And let's go ahead and do that now, right? Boom, okay? Go ahead and change that, of course, you see that change here, right? We can go ahead and change the time, right? We can sync that up, right? We can go ahead and make some configuration changes with the NTP. We can change that port number, right? For my people that passed Security Plus, right? We can change those default, right? HTTPS being 443 or HTTP being 80. We can change that. We can change the SSH port, right? We can change the Telnet port, right? Of course, right? We can change the idle timeout. This is everything you can change here right you have that option right with you know and this is all tied to administrative access okay now let's go ahead and take a detour right and how much even more we can go ahead and secure um administrative access right let's go back to interface let's go to port two right because that's our way right all right and you see here we have a section for administrative access as well you have a lot of options here, right? That you can go ahead and enable, right? First things first, right? If we're talking about layer three, you can actually enable, right? What protocol, right? Whether it be IPv4, IPv6 is enabled by default, right? Which, which one you want to enable by default for interface to have access, right? You can actually separate access via IPv4 or if you want access to just IPv6, you can actually manage that here, okay? With the IPv6 options, of course, they're hidden by default. You have to go into CLI, make some changes here and there. But yeah, you have that option, right? You can also go ahead and enable, right, what protocols 
are used to access, right, the FortiGate, right, IP address, right, this IP address, right? So whenever somebody's trying to access this address, for example, right, you can list what protocols that are that are enabled, right, that are that are being used to access this interface, right? And what does that mean, right? So, right, if we went ahead and do a packet capture, we would see, right, and if we do a debug, right, the FortiGate is listening via on these protocol ports, right? It's listening on 443. It's listening on port 80. It's listening on SSH, just listening, you, you know, it's pings are enabled, right? If we were to enable SNMP, it would listen to that port number, right? We can go ahead and set all of that here, right? We also have access for LLDP, right? That's not so much layer three, that's layer two. We can enable that as well, right? Then it will start um, enabling, right? Depending on if we set receive, right, or transmit, if we set receive, it'll go ahead and receive those LLDP uh, frames, right? From different device right or we can go ahead and set set it to transmit right they go ahead and, and send those LLDP frames right or we can do both totally up to you okay you have all that options but just i just want to make it clear this is just for this interface if you have multiple interfaces you would have to go ahead and set that up okay but again you have to keep in mind what are you allowing right Every, this device lets you do anything that you want, but what you allow, right, you're opening your attack vector even wider, right? Because again, it, it'll take anybody to just walk in and start just doing some brute force attempts, right? So you have to make sure, right, if you're, you know, managing this device, know a little bit, right, about networking, right, to the point to where you're organizing your network to the point to where you're you know, limiting who, you know, which interface, right, which subnet can access what, okay? That's why I showed you that trusted host, et cetera, et cetera, okay? All right, so make sure you're very mindful of the location of the interface, right, whenever you're setting this up, right? Because you don't want to leave your, you know, leave your device open for an attack, right? Okay, let's keep going. Any questions? Okay, let's keep rolling. All right, so we talked about all this, right? Ah, yes. So, within basic administration, right, all the features that you see, of course, on the page that, that I showed you guys, right, they're all not, you know, they're not all the features that are on a 48, right? There are some hidden by default. Right, to go ahead and enable some of these that are hidden by default, like the IPv6, we go ahead and go into GUI and we can go ahead and go to the feature visibility section under system and we can go ahead and enable some of these features. Right, let's go do that. Right, let me show you guys how that looks. Right, we go to system and we go to feature visibility. Right, have a lot of functions here. Okay, like I was telling you guys, IPv6, right, we can enable that as well. We can enable some security features. We can enable email filter, right? Explicit proxy, web application firewall, a WAF, right? ZTNA, we can go ahead and enable that here, right? A lot of options you have here, okay? Let's go ahead and uncheck that, all right? That's how that looks, okay? Keep going. All right, so interface IP, right? Which falls under basic administration, right? Because of course you're running in that mode, right? And that device, right, that you guys are setting up, right? The firewall, if you don't have an IP address set on the interface, if it's running in that mode, it can't run, right? You can't, you can't use the interface, right? So there's two ways you can have, you know, an IP address assigned to an interface. Either you set it, or you can program it to use DHCP, right? And, you know, wherever the DHCP is located, right, we have to make sure this interface can go ahead and reach it, right, via layer two, or if we have to do a DHCP relay, right, you have to make sure you set that up for it to be able to use DHCP, okay? Right, keep rolling. 
fire. Right? One other feature, right, of course, with, um, you know, setting up your interfaces, right, first, you know, first setting up your environment, setting up your FortiGate, is that there's options outside of statically setting your um, IP or just using DHCP. The FortiGate can go ahead and use 40 IPAM, right, to go ahead and automatically assign IP addresses based on the configured network size for the FortiGate interface, okay? Um, not sure if you guys are familiar with IPAM, right, but it's an IP solution, okay? Um, plenty of different vendors, of course, Fortinet has their own, right? And it can go ahead and provide you that option, right? It's a paid service, of course. Um, but it's really cool. It's a really cool thing, right? But this is another way to where you're in an interface on a FortiGate can go ahead and get an IP address, okay? Now, there is an exception, right? As far as, you know, being able to use an interface, you know, you're not able to use it unless you have an IP address on there. And that's the one arm sniffer, okay? So whenever you go ahead and configure, you know, an interface to be a one arm sniffer, right? What it's doing is, if you guys are familiar with packet captures, right? You're basically mirroring traffic from another interface to this interface to possibly, you know, to possibly get, you know, capture that traffic via a packet capture analyzer, a packet analyzer, or what have you, right? So it's not going to go ahead and have an IP address. It's going to operate via, you know, just a regular layer one interface, regular switch face that's just copying traffic. So you can do that, right? We have ports, let's say we have ports one, two, and three. We can set up one arm sniffer, right? Port three is a sniffer port, right? But it's copying packets from everything that's flown between port two. We're going to see everything that comes between port, you know, goes in and out through port two, right? But we don't need an IP address on port three, right? Because now it's running in one arm sniffer mode. So that's the one exception of the rule, right? You can configure that via via the CLI and the GUI. Okay. So one second. Let's talk about the interface roles. All right. So role versus alias, two different things, right? The role, right? If we want to go ahead and set the rule, it actually defines the interface settings, right? When they're grouped together. You may have multiple interfaces that you set the role for LAN, right? What it helps is it goes ahead and sets that interface settings, right? Maybe from layer one to layer two um, settings, right? Already for you, right? And it's already grouped. Right, and what that does is, is, is that prevents you from messing anything up, misconfiguring anything. Right, alias. It's basically a description of the interface. Right, and so you can have different aliases for different interfaces. Right, um, and you wouldn't even have you wouldn't even have an issue if you named it differently. Would have you. roles. I personally love roles because again, it keeps everything the same. Right, it keeps everything. If you have your WAN port, you can go ahead. And, Hey, this is a WAN port. The Forti the FortiGate will automatically set settings there that'll match WAN, right? You can still customize it, but it'll set it to that, right? And it'll group it, right? You have your LAN ports, you have your ports maybe you want to set into your DMZ zone. You can definitely do that. Okay. So two totally different things. Okay. Whenever you go ahead and set alias, the fun thing I like about it, right? If you set the alias, right, and you go ahead and create firewall policies. Right. If you set the alias, the firewall policy will reference that interface via the via the alias. Right. It won't reference it via the role. Okay. So that's a quick little thing that you know I think is pretty cool, and of course you have to know for the exam. So for all my CCNAs out there and, and network enthusiasts, I think you guys know what this is. Right, we need a default gateway. Right, this is running in that mode. Right, this is going to be at the perimeter, right, or wherever you set this up. Right, it's typically going to be at the edge of the network. Right, right at the edge of where the internet, right, and the right, maybe the maybe the enterprise, right, connects. Right, so we need to make sure we configure a default gateway, right, or static gateway, or what have you. 
We must have at least one, okay? Whenever integrating it within our within you guys network, okay? You can either set that statically, or you can get it via DHCP, right? It doesn't have to be statically done, all right? So, of course, to do that, you would, of course, go under network, go into static routes, and you can go ahead and create one, okay? Keep going. Link aggregation, right? What is it, right? It bundles several po physical ports to form a single point-to-point -point logical channel with greater bandwidth, right? So you guys are probably thinking, hmm, what's link aggregation, right? Um, for my CCNAs out there, that is a, this is what you would call a ether channel, right? Right, that's absolutely what a lag is, right? A, a link aggregation, another word for link aggregation is a lag, right? That's it. It's just a bundle of interfaces in two one. Okay. Works similar to like a regular interface, right? It can work at either layer three and layer two, right? Similar to Cisco. Okay. All right. So you know what time it is. It's a knowledge check. Okay. So everybody unmute and I'll ask two questions. I'll read off the questions and read off the answers and you can tell me why. Okay, so first question. How do you restrict logins to a FortiGate from only specific IP addresses? Is it A, to change the FortiGate management interface IP address, or is it B, configure a trusted host? B, configure a trusted host. There we go. Good stuff. All right. Question two. Has a best practice when configuring administrative access to a FortiGate? Which protocol should you disable? Is it A, Telnet, or is it B, SSH? A, Telnet. Mm -hmm. Why? This is why? Mm -hmm. Because it takes passwords. It's not in Your yeah, credentials aren't in the clear. In the sense. I'm sorry, somebody say it again. Clear text passwords. Clear text passwords. That's absolutely correct. If we had somebody on our network mm -hmm. that was um, sniffing traffic, right, using a um, packet analyzer, right, and capturing traffic, they can see your password that you're typing in plain text. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. All right. So. So what? Okay, guys, just thought about it. Today is Wednesday. I don't know why I kept thinking today is Thursday. It's crazy. Since we have two mm -hmm. sections, and I know yesterday was long, right? Mm -hmm. I know today was a little bit, right, long as well. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I'm going to go ahead and do a stopping point, give you guys a little bit of time back, give you guys a little bit of break. Come back tomorrow, which of course will be um, the last day of the work week, right? To so go ahead and uh, have this session, and then we're going to have another session on Saturday. You guys will finish out tomorrow, right? We're going to do the built-in service section, and then Saturday we go ahead and finish fundamental maintenance. And guess what, guys? You'll be done with chapter one. Woo! Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, thanks for attending. I will upload this to YouTube, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty, thanks, David. All right. Bye, guys. Everybody, Thank have you. a good one. No problem. You guys have a great night. All right.